giant steps represent the peak of the mountain as far as the jazz songbook is concerned. The tune is both feared and revered by jazz players the world over. Those that attempt to climb and scale that, that exalted peak require firm resolve, unwavering dedication, commitment, untold patience. Today, I would like to share with you a way in which we can gain a mastery of giant steps without even trying. I know, I know, that seems far-fetched and you can be forgiven for having some suspicion. My only disclaimer being that the secret you are about to hear may not be the one that you are expecting. I'm not interested in sharing practical tips. Play one, two, three, five down tones or try these common tones. No. Let's face it. If the secret is one you are expecting, it's most likely not a secret. Some time back, I was interested in exploring the combination of intervals that are available within arpeggios. Now, typically, arpeggios are played in intervals of thirds, both ascending and descending. I was curious to explore these kind of sounds. I liked the angularity, the contemporary sound, also the fact that I could play them as double stops. Now, I knew exactly what it would take to get these down. I'd have to look at all the variety of seventh chords, the different positions, the different string sets, different keys, um, also the single line and double stops. A considerable undertaking. At this point, I started wondering whether it might be possible to place these arpeggios in an environment that would assist me to learn them more quickly and more effectively. I figured that Giant Steps, with its rapid fire key changes, would be the perfect vehicle. With this in mind, I set about applying the arpeggios to the chord progression. In time, I noticed gradual improvement. They started sounding and feeling better. getting these arpeggios down that I hadn't actually noticed that I had unwittingly become way more adept at playing over the chord progression of giant steps. It had become more familiar, I had memorized it, I was hearing it better. This came as a complete surprise, for in truth I had never held a burning desire to learn the tune. How often does it get called at a gig? <laughs> Another concept that I'd been meaning to get to was the suspended fourth chord and its arpeggios. I've always loved Herbie Hancock and that chordal language that is shared by many a contemporary jazz pianist. Having had success with the previous material, I thought I would adopt the same strategy. <laughs> this stage, I wouldn't be surprised if you've managed to nut out the nature of the secret on your own. Here it is. If you are keen to master giant steps, or any difficult tune for that matter, the wonderful paradox here is that in taking care of the concept, the tune looks after itself. Although this idea may appear novel, it was being discussed in certain Taoist circles 
two and a half thousand years ago. In fact, the Grand Master himself, Lao Tzu, was credited as saying, It is because the sage does not desire to be great that they become great. Now, I've demonstrated several examples that appeal to me and to my taste, but of course there are a myriad number of possibilities from triads and pentatonics, bebop scales. Applying them in this fashion will expedite the learning process and enable us to become more proficient on this challenging tune. Interestingly, doing so in a way that's more personalized and meaningful. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that this lesson and secret may serve you well.